Welcome everyone to the Men's Room Podcast. This is a Men's Room Podcast special. We're talking the World Cup. Flop of the tournament. Portugal, Ronaldo. England, Kane. That's a spirit. What are you doing? It's here, people. I'm excited. I am. It feels like I'm not just because the Premier League is going to be cancelled for a little while, but I am excited. England have named their 26-man squad. It's a good squad. The question, though, to my sidekick here, the great Rory Jennings, is it a good enough squad to win the World Cup? This team is 100% good enough to win it. I'm so excited for this tournament. We have a wonderful World Cup ahead now. I'm so looking forward to it. Tournament football is always spectacular. It's always so enjoyable. I get totally in the spirit of it. And do you know what I do? Which I would advise, not only to you, to any of our listeners. Um, remove all logic. Remove all all probability and just embrace the tournament and go with the belief that England can win it because it's so fun. It's such a wonderful tournament. But it's also then very depressing when they don't. Yeah, but to experience the high you have to put yourself accept that there may be a low. Some sort of jeopardy. What's your first experiences of World Cup? Are you old enough for Italian 90? Yeah. Okay, so that was that your first one you remember though? David Platt scoring that volley against Belgium. Belgium. On the over spin, the head, come on over the, the spin. head. Wonderful. And the celebrations, as, and Lineker's falling, and the celebrations were just, just mm. uh, over the moon. I remember they were, they, were, they were wonderful. You know what the biggest memory of that World Cup is, though? Pavarotti. Pavarotti, absolutely. That there, the song there's there. not been a better, for me, I yeah. know that we've had some, you know, football's coming on, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. There's not been a better football World Cup song. I remember my dad going to that really? World Cup. I remember my dad going and not taking me, and I couldn't quite understand why. Mm. Like, I couldn't understand why I wasn't on this trip. Mm. I couldn't understand why you would possibly want to go and not take me. I then remember England playing Cameroon, and I th- remember thinking, that sounds really cool. I think I want them to win. And I remember just being told, no, that's, that's not how it works. <laughs> yeah. like, no, no, no yeah. you don't want yeah. the Cameroon to yeah, beat yeah, England. Yeah, yeah. I was like, but Cameroon, there's a geezer who's about 50 and dancing. Like, this is wicked. Are yeah. you sure we don't want them to win? If remember, ever be remembered, Mr. Roger Miller. Roger Miller, going yeah. Going to that touchline and doing that little dance. Yeah, and then I just I do remember the, the disappointment that followed. I, do, you know, do you know what? I've just realised as well. Go on. I then remember, four years later, England not making it Crazy. to America. And I remember yeah. that World Cup really well. Da, 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 be in America. Da, 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 I remember it so America. well because of the Brazilian squad. And the I think Dutch. a lot of our viewers might not know this, but the Ronaldo was on the bench. Right, the Brazilian squad. Right, right, yeah. right. I, I mean, that was on. Roberto Baggio, wasn't it? Yeah. And, uh, and weirdly, do you know, my, I actually remember my dad going over to that one. What? Yeah, because Ireland. Yeah. He sort of, like, my, you know, yeah, he's, yeah. He, when I'm saying my dad, I don't mean my actual biological father. I, know, I mean, yeah. yeah. But he went with Ireland. Like, he just decided, I think, you know, let's go, go and enjoy it. That's the first it, time, because obviously, look, England, sort of, World Cup night, you, you remember the penalties and all that. But the first time I remember that, it's not how good you are when it comes to penalty taking, when Baggio missed that penalty for Italy yeah. in the World Cup final. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. he was one of the best strikers in the world yes. at the time, right? Glorious. Glorious and that that whole World Cup, I remember getting totally in the spirit of it. And do you know, I was obviously too young to appreciate this at the time, but can you imagine the magnificence of this fixture? You know, when you think of the history of New York City mm. and then think of the the prestige of the metropolis that is New York City. Mm-hmm. Like, it's it's as iconic as, as anything can possibly be. Like, the feeling that you get, you know, when you're there on Radio City and Central Park and the John Lennon Memorial, it's, like, overwhelming, isn't it, New York? It's amazing. Mm-hmm. And then think of the history, like the immigration in the city. Yeah. Irish, Italian. In the World Cup, Ireland play Italy in New York City. Sensational. And Ray Houghton when you scores think a winner. Of that now. Ray Houghton scores a winner and Ireland win. You don't think of that, do you? When you like honestly, you saying it now, it's incredible. Mm. Like the Irish and the Italians. And going just the history of that, head. going head to head in New York. It's amazing, isn't it? Yeah. So so that was obviously the, do, do you know, because England weren't in that, I, I vaguely remember deciding I was Dutch. So I was Brazilian. I, d- I kind of went Dutch. Yeah. And they had a great team, the Dutch. Do you remember Dennis Burkap scoring those goals against Argentina? Dude, the goal. The goal. the goal, yeah. I that mean, goal there. Yeah, who's it that sends that sixty-yard pass to? Wasn't it De Boer? Was it De Boer? I think so. Frank they had a great there. team. They had they had Win Yonk and Mark Overmars. It was a wonderful. They had everything fully loaded. Fully loaded fully team. Fully loaded. Yeah, it, it was, was and, and that World Cup was was special, man. Like, is this real shame? What didn't start didn't special when Diana Ross missed the kick? Diana Ross. Remember that right. the opening ceremony and she's yeah, 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 you've got, yeah, come yeah. on, Diana, you got one job. Yeah, hit it in and it goes. Just left. make some contacts. Yeah, yeah, just yeah. make some contact. No, it, <laughs> yeah, just it make was, some contact, yeah. But yeah, like, <laughs> see, this is this is the thing. This is why World Cups and just tournament football, like, it's it's applicable to to any other tournament, but the World Cup really is prestigious. That's why that's why it's the, the best world. tournament, and that's why it's the best sport in the world. 
various landmarks of my life are punctuated by World Cup. Like, I can remember who my friends were watching Michael Owen. You know when Michael Owen scored that goal? I know exactly where I was. I was in my youth club in my state on Kilburn High Road watching that game. I remember exactly who I was with. I remember exactly what was going on in my life. 2002. 2002. No, 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 pause a second. You know how crazy... Don't just skim over Michael Owen 98. (laughs) Do you know how crazy that is what he'd done as an 18-year-old? You know when we think of this England side, one player needs to step up. Mm. 18-year-old, you're doing that to the Argentinian defence. And you're skipping past them. And I remember because he got on the edge and Paul Scholes is ready to shoot. Yeah. And he's like, get out, out of the way. way. Get out of the way. I've Barge got him this. out of the way. As Paul an 18 Scholes. year old. Yeah. No, insane. I know. The Hutch were involved to do that to Paul oh. Scholes and to Argentina. And also, England would have England would have won it. Do you know, do you know what was it was also? God. England would have won it. You know, Paul, Sol Campbell's header? Oh, Sol don't, Campbell's please, header. England don't, would have won it. Do, do, you know the, do you know the other thing that I realised, I think? I realised then, perhaps for the first time in my life, the power of media. Like you know, I would go on to work well, in the because media. of Beckham. Because of Beckham, like Beckham. I think I'd, I think I think subsequently I've read about various things since. So I, I think Tony Adams speaks very articulately about something that happened to him. Tony Adams, do you remember when it was all donkey? donkey, eeyore, donkey eeyore, yeah. Eeyore. Yeah, yeah. Not only was it unkind, but it was also untrue. Mm-hmm. Like Tony Adams is arguably the best defender that the Premier League has ever seen. Arguably, arguably, you right? can make an argument. He's, He's definitely top five. Definitely one of the best captains. It, yeah. Definitely one of the best legacies. That yeah. goal that he scores against Everton when he just stands there. Tony Adams when he is, smashes it when he's put through by Vieira. I think so. They against Maybe, Everton yeah. when they won the league. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think it's. I think he's like as iconic as it gets. Adams, mm-hmm. right? He was lambasted to a ridiculous Destroyed. degree, and I think it was a Mirror. They stuck him on. They stuck him on, on the back page at a Mirror. With donkey, donkey ears. They made a donkey out uh, of You know it. how crazy that is. And you know, but this is when the papers were selling five million copies. Do you yeah, know what I mean? Yeah, and you yeah. think, gosh. And, but I remember, because I, the, the headline of, of Argentina, to bring it to the modern day, obviously, I've read about it since, the power of the media in that era, Adams and whatever. But the first time I ever really saw it, I thought, God, that's a bit harsh. I mean, but, but it was the feeling and sentiment of the country at the time. It was 10 brave lions, one stupid boy. That's, that was the headline. I think it was the sun. Mm. Ten brave lions about the team. Yeah. And then one stupid boy. They made it all about Beckham. I, I can't imagine. It's weird because now, obviously, we look at Beckham as probably the biggest icon this That's country That's because you, ever my friend, can't hold a grudge. That's because you can't hold a grudge. I haven't forgiven Beckham from 90. I don't blame you. But look, I remember <laughs> going to like, as you say, the media. The media kept showing sort of burning effigies outside stadiums. Yeah, it's West Ham, wasn't it? Park, West, West Ham, Ham. Hung, a, West yeah. Ham hung an effigy. Look at that. Yeah. Look at that. Yeah, I think Chelsea yeah. had one. And Chelsea had something similar yeah. uh, when we played a game in Cardiff, I think. Yeah. All right, let's fast forward a few years. Here we are now. England um, got to the final of the Euros, Mm-mm. got to the semi final of the recent World Cup. Mm. Um, the 26 man squad has been announced. First, let's quickly talk about the squad. Any surprises for you? I think there are a couple of surprises, but I generally think he's got it right. Yeah. It's not something I said. I think I like, there are certain You've things that I wouldn't. This about there are certain things that I wouldn't have done. Mm. There are certain things that I wouldn't have necessarily done. I don't think Harry Maguire deserves to be in the team, in the squad. Uh, certainly not in the team. I don't think he deserves to be in the squad. I probably don't think Eric Dyer deserves to be anywhere near it, and I probably don't think that Phillips should be there. Okay, so Phillips, Maguire, and Dyer. Yes, yeah. and, you know, and I also yeah. think that there are three able deputies for those three. So if you don't take those three, it's not like, like I think. So if you don't take those three, you take Ward Prowse, Tomori, and Gay. Yeah, in I don't think you need another defender. I think no, you I think can go forward. Yeah, yeah. Go I think forward. you you add maybe another another forward. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, which which is what I would have done. But overall, and and I do have a policy, by the way. What's this? What? Um, I don't know if, uh, if everybody will agree with this, but when we get to this stage, on the pretty much the eve of a tournament, right? Just, the tournament you just, is you just support. You yeah. stick with. There's yeah. no point. Like if if you think Gareth Southgate is the right man for the job, cool. If you don't think Gareth Southgate is the right man for the job, there's no point in having that conversation it's now. Interesting anyway. you say that because actually I tweeted as well. I said, look, I think tomorrow should have been over dire, but it is what it is. And there's no. What am I going to do? If He's not going to get called up, is he? If we were when when we were having these conversations three months ago, so you know when England got battered by Hungary four mm, nil, mm. the game at Molyneux, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think at that point you say sack the manager. Yeah. At that point we can explore is sacking the manager the right thing to do. At that point we can say various other options are available and we have enough time to prepare for a tournament, and therefore let's explore it today. Mm. There's no point. Gareth Southgate will be England's manager. Going into Qatar. So, so let's just completely back him, pledge unilateral partisan support to Gareth Southgate, to the team, and let's hope for the best. Yeah. How, how weird is it? And look, we're going to talk about the fact that the World Cup's in Qatar and Seth Blatter's come out recently, former president of FIFA, and said it shouldn't have gone to Qatar, it should have gone to the USA. We're going to talk about it being in Qatar. It's one that's not going to be forgotten. It's one that's not going to be forgotten. No, it's a landmark. It punctuates the season. Mm. It's in a place where... 
first one in the Middle East. First one in the Middle East. It's a it's a landmark World Cup. Whatever spin you want to put on this World Cup, well, even like positive or negative, it's historic. Do you know the other thing that I think is is fair to say here? You know, as pundits and fans, English people have a propensity to overinflate our chances of winning it. So teams that were never going to win a tournament, we believe that they could. Twenty ten, like the twenty team ten team was diabolical. Yeah. And we went into that thinking we could do it. We couldn't. But you know this team? Mm. The players that are there, the players that know they're going to start, they must look around the dressing room and think, we know I've got some players here. We've got some players here. Look, maybe you think Brazil are more likely to win it. Maybe you think Argentina are more likely to win it. Maybe you think France are more likely to win it. But this England team can. And if you're... If you're Phil Foden, you're sitting in that dressing room and over there is Jack Grealish and over there is Harry Kane and over there is Declan Rice and see that guys are over there getting changed, Jude Bellingham. You've got to be looking around thinking, you know what the problem is? You know, you know what the problem is? And over there is Maguire and over there is Dyer. Yeah. and over there is Connor Cody. In, yeah. my, in my opinion, England's best team is 4-3-3. Three, three. England's best formation is 4-3-3. Three, three. Four at the back because we haven't got five good defenders. So play four. And that way you get an extra creative player. If you don't have, five, like, basically, it comes a choice. Do you want do you want Eric Dyer on the pitch or do you want Phil Foden, Foden on the as pitch? well as Saka and Sterling? The, yeah. cho- the choice honestly becomes, so interesting, do you want it? Phil Foden or Eric Dyer? Who is the biggest threat in this World Cup? Is it obvious I to say it's Brazil? Yeah, it's Brazil. Just, I think people mate, keep they're, talking they're about France and I don't see it. I, I, you really don't? I don't really. I mean, I see it. I see France being comparable to England. No, better. I don't. I don't necessarily better, agree. Better, I think. Better, I think better. Didier Deschamps is a very negative manager. I think the injuries to Kanté and Pogba. You know, you know what are I huge. noticed though. You know, as negative, he's as basically as negative as Gareth Southgate. But the difference between the France players and the England players, they don't listen to him. So Mbappe <laughs> will get the ball and he'll go past four. And although Deschamps screaming, see, see Mbappe is another one. No, nah, he, he turns up. Addy, Addy, if, if you were to say, if if you were to say, how will the French do? I think you're perfectly onto something in saying yeah. that they could win. But they are well capable of an implosion. Oh, we saw remember, it in the remember? Euros. We saw it in the Euros. No, but I'll tell you, I'm right in thinking. Was it 02 when they played Senegal when they got beat? Do you remember? They, they didn't score. They, they, didn't they score. went into they that. Score. They went, they went into, into, as into that as champions, champions. And they didn't score yeah. a goal. See, yeah. this, is what, this yeah. is what we were talking about earlier. And this is why I love it. Every World Cup is so synonymous with a moment in your life. Yeah. I know exactly where I was watching that game. And, and I, I think that you can almost do a life story... Based on World Cups, you know when yeah, I was a kid. Four years is a big, it's set, a, yeah. it's a big chunk, isn't so, it? So, yeah. so you know, I went to Brazil. Like, in fact, do you, do you know what? Really briefly, my life story over the last few World Cups. I went to Brazil as a single man. I went out there. I went for the month. I had no money. I had no job. I had no career. But a few of my mates from Chelsea were going. And I just went. Just, just went. Like, went over there with nothing. Mm-hmm. I knew a girl who was working in PR. She had a flat. I stayed on her floor. Just went to Brazil mm-hmm. for a month. Mm-hmm. Roy Hodgson ruined it, but it was meant to be amazing, right? Yeah. By the next World Cup, by the next World Cup, didn't go to a game because my missus was about to have a baby. And this World Cup? And this World Cup, I'm going again because I've got a three-year-old and things are going well. Yeah, no, Is it, it's it's, can you do that? No, I certainly cannot. Can you not do that? Where were you Where were you watching? Where did you watch Michael Owen score? <sighs> Hostel and Stratford. Okay. Hostel and Stratford. Just where finished did you, college, got kicked out. Where did you Sorry. watch, where did you watch Roberto Baggio miss his penalty? <sighs> In my house. Just at home. Yeah. What about what about England going out when Ronaldinho scored? Oasis, stop crying your heart out. That was a song. I can't do it the way you didn't. What you, can't you did was cr- I can chronologise no. my life with World Cups, man. All right, let's go on. England. Yes or no? To win the World Cup, yes. Why not? No, yeah. don't, not why not. Why not? No, I'm never going to say that England can't win a tournament going into it. I'm, uh, it's my duty to, to, to believe. Who's the star boy? And the clue could be in the title there. I mean, Who's a star boy for England? It's Phil Foden. That's, That's who it's it not. Sh- it's not though, is it? It is. It should. No, be. It should be Phil Foden, but it's not. Well, then it's then it's Rice or Bellingham. You don't think it could be Saka? He's in my starting eleven. He's in, starting he's 11. in my starting eleven. Starting he's hundred percent in my starting eleven. Hundred percent in. Yeah, I mean, um, Raheem Sterling's not in my starting eleven. That's what's. You're surprising. in Chelsea. Strikers. I mean, not but, in. but it's not about club allegiances. Well, yeah, what? but it should be about what he does for England and what he does for England is, as we've seen, especially in the Euros, he delivers. Uh, but he hasn't played well. I mean, by that logic, you'd, I'd have to pick Harry Maguire, and I don't pick him either. I think I think football should be a meritocracy, and if you're good enough, if you're playing well, you get into the team. I think football should be really easy to select a team at international level. Can we quickly talk about the World Cup being in Qatar? And, yeah. And how crazy it is it being yeah. there. It's a bit strange, isn't it? I mean, with what's going on, 
in the uh, world for it to be there and set blatter former fifa president to come out and say we should have gone to the usa yeah I, I mean I, I and i'm all up for sport look it's a, it's a global sport it should go to every region the boxing's going to mm. there as well and we're seeing formula one the ufc go to those regions but you know a lot of been talk about sports washing and what's going on in qatar is know, it a good or bad thing i'd that ignore it's immediately there? set blatter Oh, there, there is an opinion in Sepp Blatter that I will never, ever take. Sepp Blatter's motivation is always self-interest and financial. Football has many reasons why it's gone so wrong. Yeah. And the pollution of money is very, very prominent in why football's he gone so wrong. Top of the if tree, one man, man is, is, is responsible for the plight of football, it's that man. What do you make of it then? Do you have any opinion on it? I'm not going to try and force you yeah, to have no, an opinion. No, of course. Do you feel like it's... Uh, a good or bad thing. Some people say it's a good thing because it goes, people go there, journalists go there, they talk about it, hopefully, not just about the football. Um, some are like, why are they even given the opportunity to stage a World Cup when well, there's so it, much well, wrong going very, on in the country? Very harsh, Adi. You, look, you spend a lot of time in this region. You yeah. spend a lot of time in this part of the world because the boxing is there and you're synonymous yep, yep. with boxing and you, you, know, you, you, you know this region far better than I do. But what I think is very difficult is the hostility to the region that has been accentuated by media is very unjust on the people that are from there. The people that are from there are football-loving. They are desperate to welcome a tournament to the Middle East. Mm -hmm. They want to show off their, their world, their country, to the world. And the way that we've viewed the tournament, the way that we've spoken about the tournament, is very hostile on genuine football fans from the Middle East who are incredibly excited, excited for, for the World Cup. Yeah. There, is, there is a more political level... But it would be disingenuous of me to talk about that because I'm a football fan, first and foremost. Yeah. I'm a football broadcaster as my profession. I can talk to you about formations, or I can do my best to do that. I can talk to you about the merits of Chuamani. Mm -hmm. I can talk to you about why Germany could easily win this World Cup. I, could, I can do that. But for me to comment on the political landscape of the Middle East would be incredibly... I'm going to ask you some questions and some quick fire answers, yeah? Go for it. Ready? Top goal scorer. Vinicius Junior. Ooh, interesting. Good player. Very, very good player. Flop of the tournament. Country or individual? Country and individual. Portugal, so Ronaldo. Really? Same, yeah. Portugal, Ronaldo. Good shout that, isn't it? Yeah. Good shout that is. Good shout. I like that one. I like that one a lot, actually. Portugal, what about you? England, Kane. For top goal scorer? No, flop. Oh, really? Yeah. That's a spirit. What sorry. are you doing? I'm sorry. Flop of the tournament. I'm, I'm Harry Kane. I'm, I'm absolutely appalled. Yeah, Conte of said, all of, of, Conte of all said, of the possible Conte said he's knackered. Of all of Conte the people said he's that you knackered. could have said there. Of yeah. all of the people that you had the opportunity well, one to second. say. You just, went, you just went to one of the greatest forwards we've ever seen in football. Ronaldo and Portugal. Yeah, but I'm doing that patriotically. Because I can't <laughs> want that. <laughs> yeah. Come on. How's that? Surprise team of the tournament. Who's going to surprise you? In a, in a positive way. In a positive way. Who's going to be like, ooh, didn't you see that coming? I think Spain could do all right, you know. Yeah. I'll tell you who else, who yeah, else no, no look good. No one's speaking about them. Do you know who else I think look good, if they get it right? Uruguay. Like, Uruguay's front line. Yeah, mate, mate. Suarez, Cavani, Nunes. Like, yeah. it's good, isn't it? It's good. It's old. If, it's old, but it's, it's good. It's really old. It's really I mean, obviously, old. Nunes equals out the average age a lot. Yeah. But are you, you're talking, what, 37 yeah, and 36. Suarez, Suarez Cavani, Nunes. Suarez has no knees. U Uruguay. I'm actually going to go with Uruguay. You know who I was going to go with? Go on. Until Mane got injured, Senegal. Yeah. I was going to go with them as a start. No, you, you can't now. Mane, no, 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 yeah, no, yeah, no, yeah, it's done, yeah. it's done, because they've got your boy Koulibaly yeah. at the back. Yeah. And if they've got Koulibaly at the back, not much is going to happen. Who was your choice for top goal scorer? Benzema. Yeah, it's a good shout. It's a good shout, and France it? could be a shout for flop, though. France could be a shout yeah, for France flop. Yeah, France could implode. Yeah. France could implode. You know who might surprise a lot of people that no one's talking about? Dutch. The Dutch. Yeah. Yeah. No one. Do you know, who else? Do you know who else are really good? Probably the best team, the best team in the tournament, sort of pound for pound, the Danes. The great Danes. You know what? Yeah. Because they were That's a remember great they got shot. to the semi final. Yeah. And they're better now than they were then. Yeah. So the Danes the Danes could do some damage. Yeah, and Ericsson's back for them as well. The Danes could definitely do some damage. But Yeah, but look, it's gonna be a good Who's great your tournament. overall winner? Who do you think? Brazil. Really? I think every tournament starts with Brazil though, isn't it? Not this In one. Brazil. Not this one, mate. They sing in for England. England. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right, should we do our elevens? Yeah, I mean, it's very self-explanatory. Is it really? Is that easy for you? Really easy. All right, go on then. Goalkeeper, obviously, Pickford. Pickford in goal. Yep. I then go... What formation? 4-3-3. Four, 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 three, three. Go on, then. okay. Luke Shaw on the left. Kieran Trippi on the right. Yeah. This is this is left field now. I don't rate Eric Dyer or Harry Maguire at all. 
and therefore I'm leaving them both out. I don't think Connor Cody is there to play football at all, and therefore he's not in. So I'm doing something slightly left field. Is Connor Cody there to do then? It, what, you know, tea? you know, Connor Cody was referred to as being the most important player at Euro 2020. He didn't kick a ball. Okay, I know, I know he's. He's there for that. the yeah enjoyment. Me, yeah, harmony. Um, I'm going to go. This is left field, and we'll probably get some traction in the comments, and people won't like it. But I'm going to go. Kai Walker centre half alongside John Stones. Love it. Sign me up. The three in the middle, obviously, Declan Rice, Jude Bellingham, Mason Mount. Nope. In front of them goes Phil Foden on the left, Harry Kane Ooh. in the middle, Bukayo Saka on the right. Problem Easy. With, so you're not a problem with that front three is? No pace. Slow front three. You need Bukayo a bit of Saka's rapid. He ain't, you know. No. He, ain't, <laughs> he, ain't, he ain't that fast at all. All right, so I like your back four. In fact, I'm going to stick with that back four as well. What, you want Carl Walker? I want Carl Walker and Stones. They understand each other, Man City, that connection. So I'm going to go Carl Walker, Stone, centre-backs, Kieran Trippier, Luke Shaw. Uh, midfield three is interesting. I'm going Bellingham. I'm going Declan Rice. I'm going Foden in the 10. Bit of magic, do whatever you want, Foden. I can't Foden. quite work out and where you're going to put Mason Mount. Saka, sorry? I can't work out where you're going to put Mason on the bench. Mount. So I'm going Saka, Kane, Sterling. Who's your go-to man on the bench? Trying to score goals. Trying to score goals. You're 1-0 down, France. Do you go forward in Callum Wilson or do you go Madison Grealish? Grealish. Go Grealish. I go Grealish. I like Madison's inclusion. I like Madison, way. you know. I like Madison. But Gre- yeah. Grealish would be my answer because I love a wild card. I love the unpredictability. Madison's that now. Madison's that. Madison is that wild card. He's not as maverick as, as Grealish. Though. No, because he hasn't got big calves and socks down. Apart but from it all that. filters in. It's all part of It's all part of the look, story. isn't it? Story, yeah, yeah. It's all part of the look. Uh, look, it's going to be a fantastic World Cup. Um, gets underway very, very soon. Remember, TalkSport have exclusive coverage of it. We're going to keep you covered. Not only we listen to it on TalkSport, we've got World Cup fan zones all over the place as well. So look, make sure you stick to TalkSport because we have it covered. And England might, just might bring it home. Might. <laughs>